Well, good Monday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here for my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. You know, uh, I am going to say what I always say. That a win is a win. The Cowboys, we've already made liars out of Philly 500 who said we were going to be two and five. Two and five. So we've got one, two, three wins. Three wins. Three wins right there. So I feel better, especially when it was darkest before the dawn here, where people did not give the Cowboys a chance. And we will hear revisionist history today that the Cowboys, it wasn't, it, it, they played nobody. We know that we're going to hear that they played nobody, that it doesn't matter, um, that this was not a quality win, and that they really are just not good, that they're not a good team. That's what you'll hear today. It will be revisionist history where they literally tell you the Cowboys beat nobody, Okay. Let's be clear here. We know that's what we're going to hear. In fact, um, this is, l let me give you a clip here, just a little taste here. Because this was what we saw last week. Dan Graziano was the only one early in the week that picked the Cowboys. You see all the Steelers up there, right? And listen how they get laughed at. Full disclosure, uh, they, they, we got the email for the picks on Tuesday. Tuesday is my, my longest day of the week, right? Like I, I'm here in the morning, I do shows in the afternoon from home. It's a well, long day. And, and at the end of the day, sometimes, sometimes it's, it's Gummy Tuesday. And, yeah. and I made Gummy pick, Tuesday. And I'm going to stand by it. Right. That's, I picked Dallas. And so, we ain't yeah. talking about Gummy Bears. No, we're not. I'm not going to surprise. I'm not Full gonna disclosure. Either. I, I have been talking been, about Black Forest. I haven't been this Are surprised they? since Chris Russo <laughs> talked about <laughs> using well, I'm just saying. Well, like, like, that's just, I, I got to own the bikes. picks. They're there. It's up there on That TV. was an unexpected moment. Okay. Tonight on E. So. We'll hear all of them tell us that, you know, it wasn't a quality win. It, it was not a quality win. The Cowboys didn't deserve it. They're going to tell you all kinds of manure. But in the end, the Cowboys found a way to win when they were injured. And let's be clear here. When we go down the list of players that were injured in that game, it's, it's the fact that we lost Tyler Guyton in the middle of the game, and Marshawn Nealon at the beginning of the game, the Cowboys were able to recover. Dak had miscommunication with C.D. Lamb, bad throws, uh, whatever. You know, it was not a great game by Dak Prescott by any stretch of the imagination. The team ended up having 11 penalties. Not good. But the defense ended up now now let me preface it this and say that the defense played really really good but i have to also say that the steelers were beat up like we were so they had problems with their left tackles and so on but you could look at this and say the dallas cowboys which had the highest paid player on the field going against the highest paid defense in the nfl that had been doing some damage got a win on the road when you were beat up when people weren't picking you. And so a win in the NFL, I can always say, 
you have 17 opportunities to prove that you are one of the ones that get a chance to try and win a Super Bowl. So I'm not going to apologize or anything else. If anything, I think we've discovered some things on the roster, okay? I don't want to give the Joneses credit that, you know, we got we believe in our guys and stuff. But what we found out is Jalen Tolbert. Uh, but before I get to that, before I get to this, it's funny. I get, you, you 49er fans, okay? I believe you got an L yesterday. Take your L and shut the F up, okay? Take your L and literally shut up. Shut the fuck up. Shut all the way the fuck up until you reach the top of shut fuck mountain where there are no more fuck ups to shut. That's what I have for you 49er fans. But I get a a, 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 a message from a Jay Maxwell. For your love, for, uh, I mean, from your love of Dak, you can't even say that an interception was an awful throw that a veteran quarterback should never make. Run your mouth all day about other quarterbacks, but but you can't say a single bad thing about your lover. Niners for life. My response to that yesterday. My response to it was three and two, jackass. What's your team? Goodwin, he responded, good win last night, but we both know the cows are dog shit. In a few weeks, they'll come to San Francisco and get destroyed like they always do. Maxwell, you better pray that the Cowboys don't, don't, you, you better pray. You better pray that, that, they, that, that don't happen, okay? So, last night, the Cowboys found a way to win when they weren't playing great. The penalties are a major concern for me and for the Dallas Cowboys. We have got to cut those down. Some of them, you look at, it doesn't matter what you do, that the officials just calling shit, that, that they, they're just calling stuff, and you got, there's nothing you can do about it. Um, but what we found out yesterday is we do have some other guys that can step up because my biggest fear with the Dallas Cowboys has been that if C.D. Lamb is taken out of the game, is... Do we have another playmaker? Okay. That's where you look at and say getting a Devontae Adams would be huge because that's somebody else who could step in and play. But it may be, maybe, just maybe, we found the guy in Jalen Tolbert because this was a breakout party for several guys. Jalen Tolbert, who, mind you, got hit in the family jewels before the touchdown catch. Yeah, Tyler Smith was going. You're going to see the clip in a minute here. From Tyler, Tyler Smith, let us know he got hit. He got hit in the family jewel. He sprained his nuts, as he said. But listen to Jalen Tolbert. This is the interview after the win. Tolbert, great job. How are you? A career game for you. Walk me through that final sequence. Really take it from that last timeout. Were you a little banged up on the sideline? Then you go back in. The play before, you almost caught the ball in the back of the end zone, right? And then you you get up and you're a little bit limited. Um, so (laughs) you got right. It was a low ball. I thought I could get underneath it, and I took a one hopper. Here we go. We'll take a a one hopper. They you didn't show up right right there. Yeah. coming open in the back of the end zone. Oh, this is oh, a touchdown. Oh, this is the touchdown. Yeah, we knew they, the crossers was going to get them, so all yeah. I had to do was get through clean. Did you figure it was going to be man or zone? Man, we knew that. We, we knew that's what they like to play in the red zone. Uh, so we knew the crossers would get them, so all you had to do was get through clean, and we, what, was, we, we knew it was Was this play. designed for you all the way? Uh, it's really a two-way play, so CD goes over the top. Okay. I go underneath him, and whichever side the safety takes, you know, the, the ball goes over there. Over. And Dak just has to make the throw. Yeah. What does this do for your confidence? Uh, my confidence continues to grow each and every week, each and every day, honestly. So uh, it's continuing to skyrocket. Uh, look forward to getting back to work with the guys next week and, and taking on a tough th- opponent at home. But, uh, like I say, I'm, I'm – Proud of the, the team tonight, most and most importantly, but also, like I said, my confidence continues to grow. I'm looking forward to it. You're a good player, man. Appreciate you. You're man. a real good player. I want to go back to this this last <laughs> play, though, because the referee's talking to you. He wants you to come out. You want to stay in. You come out of the game, right? And then they call timeout. Did that let you come back in the game? Yep. Uh, yeah, so like I said, the play before, uh, it was a low ball. I thought I could get underneath it. Took a one hopper to the to the private area. Oh, and then, um, 
I like I said, I, I, could, I couldn't breathe for a second. Oh, here you go, right here. Okay. Yeah, you're open. This right might there. be just, oh, that, okay. What? Yeah, you're I couldn't right breathe there. for a second. <laughs> hey, Jalen, uh, they calling your name out, hey, big dog. What does this mean? Hey, I love it. I love Dallas. I love the fans. Takeover. Let's get it. It's special, man. Everywhere y'all go, you got fans in the stands. Always, our, our fans travel well. They're the best fan base in the nation. Uh, we got to keep putting on for them. What's, what's running through your mind when you realize you just caught the game winner? Uh, honestly, I start giving myself myself the self-confidence, just talking to myself. Like, this is what I work hard for. I'm one-on-one. Uh, I'm built for these moments. And like I say, all my teammates came and celebrated with me, so it was a special moment. I'm glad I could get the win for the team. Obviously, uh, it took all of us, but to finish out like that, uh, it's, it's pretty special. And like I say, I'm looking forward to growing on it and continuing to grow on it throughout the season. Talk about the heart and the mental toughness that it took to come in here to, to beat these guys at home, on the road, with the rain and all the delays and all the adversity that you guys face with the injuries. Uh, yeah, man, that's just the type of team we have. We knew we were going to come in here. It was going to be a hard-fought match. Uh, it goes back in history, so we, we, know what, we know what this game pertains. And so uh, we knew it was going to be a physical match. We had to come out and be more aggressive, more physical, and make more plays. And uh, like I said. You got to feel happy for Jalen Tolbert, and you got to be happy as a Dallas Cowboy fan because last night, um, Jalen Tolbert, seven catches, 87 yards, 12.4 yards a carry. I mean, excuse me, a reception. And also Jake Ferguson doing the work, you know, six uh, receptions, 70 yards, 11.7 yards per reception, becoming the security blanket. And this bodes well because, see, here's the thing. <clears throat> What this last night, with the exception of the turnovers, we, we had some mistakes. We had the fumble by Dak. We had the two interceptions and things like that. You saw what Mike McCarthy wants to do with this offense. It wants to be the death of a thousand cuts, okay? That they literally keep moving the ball around so that way there's not one person to key on. And last night, CeeDee Lamb was only your third leading receiver. He had five receptions for 62 yards. You had seven by Jalen Tolbert, six by Jake Ferguson, five by CD. Kayvon Turpin had four receptions for 50 yards, which is huge. Rico had two for 27. Brent Span Ford had two for 20. Hunter Lipke had one, which was huge. That was basically a screen that he took for 18 yards, which got us down on the five-yard line. My Dallas Cowboys, Mike Allstott. Uh, we'll talk about that another time. Jalen Brooks got one, and Luke Schoonmaker got one. And so when you look at that being one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different receivers, the, somewhere there's a stat when Dak, hit, Dak hits seven or more players with the football, the Cowboys have a – I don't know exactly what it is, but they have a great winning record. It's kind of like when Emmett Smith would rush for 100 yards, the Cowboys pretty much won almost all the time. And this is what the Cowboys need to be able to do. It's good to see that the Cowboys were able to move the ball all over the place. Um, Dak Prescott, not the best night um, with the interceptions, but ended up being clutched down the stretch to get us in there. People will say, well, he wouldn't have had to been clutch had he not had the turnovers. You're going against a really good defense. The Steelers um, last week were the number one rated defense in football. They're the highest paid defense. You ended up having one of your rookie offensive linemen go out. Terrence Steele was getting eaten up by T.J. Watt. So for them to go through, get this, uh, you know what, a win in the NFL against a team that had a winning record is a win. I don't want to hear anything about you're beating tomato cans. I know that's what they're going to turn it into. No, they were a good team. You beat in their house when nobody thought that you could. When you had a multitude of injuries, guys, you lost your number two wide receiver. You lost two of your best edge rushers. You still don't have one of your best cornerbacks. You have the rookie that was replacing him not playing as well. You got Tyler Guyton that goes out and Marshawn Nealon. And you have to look at this, well, Mike Zimmer, his defense finally showed up. So let's hopefully lick our wounds here, get back to Dallas. Hopefully it's not as bad as it looks. When I was did that opening clip, you saw Tyler Guyton in, in that clip walking off the field. Now, I've got some thoughts on Tyler Guyton. The Cowboys, what we learned last night is maybe Tyler Guyton needs some more time and more seasoning. And I think that maybe, just maybe, 
they may want to look at Tyler Smith staying at the left tackle position. And I honestly believe that maybe you should start thinking about Tyler Guyton playing right. Terrence Steele has not been the same guy coming back from the ACL. And maybe Tyler Guyton can get some more confidence playing at right tackle, his natural position, getting used to playing in the NFL and not necessarily going against the best of the best every week. Um, That's just the thought that I have. The other side of the equation, you know, sometimes when you have somebody who's great as Micah Parsons, and I can't wait to see his podcast today, that what you end up having is you rely on him and you're waiting for him to make the plays. He wasn't there along with D-Law. You saw some guys out there that were hungry. hungry. Um, Tavares Wheat had an incredible game. Mozzie Smith came through, and he's beginning to push the pocket and become a beast in the middle. So there's a lot of positives in here. Mozzie Smith, look at the, check this out. Three tackles and one assist for Mozzie. Okay? I believe that's nine tackles that he's got on the season already. I know people who don't understand what an interior defensive lineman, you're going to compare him to a linebacker's tackles that might get 120 tackles. That's not your job. His job is to occupy space in the middle, keep the linebackers clean so they can do their work. This was a good all-around win for the Cowboys. We have things we have to clean up. We have guys that need to get more experience. But you should be happy today that the Cowboys, going through the toughest part of their schedule thus far, are 3-2. and two. Let's uh, finish this off. I've got to get started working on a roof. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. Whew. We started live streaming at 9.30 yesterday morning. We live streamed all day long, with the only exception being when I stopped the stream at 10 and a half hours and reloaded and was back on for five, five minutes later to finish it off. It was a long ass day. By the time we got finished with that and did my fireside chat, it was 2.30 this morning when I went to bed. And so I might be a little bit tired today, so understand um, I'm a little late getting started, but I am excited as can be, and we've got a lot of work to do. But let's listen in to the good people at ESPN that literally said Dallas had no chance, that Dallas was going to lose. And let's see if they're still hating today or if they'll give them credit. I'm betting Dan Lousy won't give the Cowboys any credit. You're pissed at yourself, like you said, for the turnovers, for the interceptions. Um, but, but when I realize I have the ball um, down four with an opportunity to score with, with enough time, plenty of time, um, that, that's all I can ask for. Bro, I mean, it was miraculous. I mean, JT literally sprained his <laughs> nuts. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Guys. Sprained his nuts the play before, comes back, makes the game winner. Unbelievable. <clears throat> Yes, that's what Dan was referring to. For those who don't know, Jalen Tolbert had suffered an injury to a, um, a discreet area and then winds up catching the it. touchdown on the final play, playing in place of the injured Brandon Cooks. Okay, Rex, very, the very top line take you had for us in our meeting this morning was what? Dallas beat the hell out of them, and I know nobody's going to say that. No, they did. And I've been, nobody's been more critical of their defense than me. Mm-hmm. But they actually had a plan. Like, it was crazy. And without your two really good pass rushers, they had a great plan. Mike Zimmer, I got to give him credit, all right, especially containing the uh, the quarterback as well as stopping the run. Like, we all I, – I thought Pittsburgh was going to run the ball down their throat. Never happened. And so you got to give them credit. I think that was the most impressive thing. And then offensively as well, that this team – man, I mean, they had two-to-one yardage advantage. Mm-hmm. They put up 100 extra yards over anybody that Pittsburgh's played yep. this year. So to me, I thought they beat the hell out of them. Now, it doesn't help when you turn the ball over three times, mm-hmm. So, and that's why this was a game. They giveth and they taketh away. They kept them in the game and they found a way to win it at the end. D. Wood, number one take. This is the type of game that Dallas Cowboys usually don't win. Yeah, mm-hmm. They don't usually true. win these type of games. Yep. Bad as the, you know, Dak Prescott didn't play well. Obviously, the turnovers, you know, particularly in the red zone. 
you know, they're coming off performances where they couldn't stop a nosebleed running the ball, and you're able to go on the road, shut down the run game of the Pittsburgh Steelers. You're able to try to run the ball. Some. It's not, it wasn't very efficient, but at least you attempted to run the football. And to me, I think that's the biggest thing. No, you know, no Michael Parsons, no, DeMar- no DeMarcus Lawrence, and you still were able to go on the road and get a football, get a, get, get a win. To me, that's what I got out of that game with. And how impressed were you? Not impressed at all. This is bad offense for Dallas, bailed out by bad offense for (sighs) Pittsburgh. Three turnovers, two of them took points off the board. They avoid catastrophe. I'll give you that. But this is not an impressive win by the Dallas Cowboys. This, This is an offense that... Like I said, two turnovers that are inexplainable in taking points off the board. They, they had six points with, what, 18 minutes left in the football game mm-hmm. or so? And, and they get it done. The, the, the game-winning drive absolutely matters. They win the game when it matters. But the two turnovers by Dakar. That one is terrible. That one's really it, – it's tough for me to understand that one because there's a miscommunication between him and CeeDee Lamb. Is he expecting a stop route? The fumble that happens. This was more about – Pittsburgh having an offensive problem, and it's not the quarterback, by the way. It's the receivers. But this is not an, an impressive performance by the Dallas Cowboys. See, I think it, I think it is. How? And because, number one, they battled back, all right, and, and had a huge drive at the end of the game to, win, to uh, win the thing. But to just ignore the fact that their defense played their asses off. Yes, they were good against the run, and they covered Pittsburgh up. And they've they- been awful, Dan. I mean, their defense has been so bad that to rise up and play against – albeit not an offensive juggernaut, a team that we thought could get something it, done against them in the running game. Don't forget, game. Pittsburgh's offensive line is down two starters as well. Yeah. Roger Jones at right, right tackle is not playing well. So th- this is not an offensive unit right now, specifically in the line of scrimmage, that's been dominant. Right. But I'm going to say it's the mentality of, of the Dallas Cowboys. I agree with D. Wood. That's not normally what we see. Usually they, they get out physical in, in these games, especially by a team that's committed to it. Yeah. All right. And, and so that's what impressed me the, the, the most. And the fact you also get this game winner right here. How big a guts does that take yeah. right there? And well, I, I, like, just... like to me, I, I mean, this is a win. It's hard as hell to win on the road. It's really hard to win in Pittsburgh. All right. And so to me, I, I take away if I'm a Dallas fan, I'm extremely happy about this. I'm going to give you this. If you're the Cowboys, you love the fact that you win the game on the road. And really because of a player like a Jake Ferguson on third down yeah. or Jalen Tolbert. So that matters. What, what, what do you feel different about this Cowboys team, though? Are they beating Washington? Are they beating Philly? Are they beating Minnesota? Here's what I will say. <laughs> we're a quarter way through the season. Mm-hmm. Like, team, we're nowhere near to the point where we, we, we can formulate, you what know, like, are. oh, this team has got the division wrapped up. My whole point is – it's always been the DNA of the Cowboys to lose a game like that. Yeah, right. It's always been in the DNA. Like, they've always, throughout their history, lost games like that. Yep. And to go out there and commit multiple turnovers and, and, and to find a way to stop the run, do those and play physical, uh, physical brand of football, I'm just impressed with the fact that they found a way to win the game. I'm not making any declarations that, they, oh, the Cowboys are, are back. But to win a football game like that on the road in Pittsburgh, I got to give them credit. I, I, you can, I, t- in my opinion, if I could just – you can both be right, which is to say there are any number of ways in which you watch that game and you're not incredibly impressed. But they went into a, a series – after they <laughs> lost that game against Baltimore, they're looking at back-to-back road games at the Giants on a Thursday night and then at Who Pittsburgh. Won, they you? needed both of these games, sure. and they got them. When you look at the schedule they have th- – can we put up A-19 just very quickly – if the Cowboys don't win both of these games, right. they're probably getting buried because look what they have coming up here. So these were critical wins, Dan. So to your point, they've got stuff to work on. No doubt, Greedy. But they kept their season alive. I-, I completely agree with that, and that's a fair point. But li- looking at this schedule, they've won these past two games against, you know, the Giants who are okay, and Pittsburgh, who I think is a good football team. They're not beating the Lions, the Niners, the Falcons, the Eagles, Texans. Or the commander scoring 20. Yeah. I, that's that's what they've done their past game. Let me ask underdogs and all the Let me ask Rex this. Rex, isn't this the type of perfect type of game for a coach? Because you find a way to win, but you don't it, – it's not pretty. Like, your quarterback turns the ball over multiple times. Mm-hmm. It wasn't always pretty. But you're able to come away with the victory. To me, those are the perfect type of game for coaches because now you can go back to the film room like, guys, we, we won the game, but look how bad we played. Like, if we just – 
tighten up on some of these things. Look how much better we can be as a football that play team. That's huge. Well, that's what I'm way. saying. Yeah, that one right there. Now that tells you all you need to know about Dak Prescott. Oh, yeah, I mean Dak Prescott's we've seen the ultimate competitor. Even even real tough quarterbacks not do that <laughs> even in the Super that's Bowl. Right. Oh, like I'm telling, telling you, that like kid that. right there, I love Dak Prescott, and that's what this guy always gives you a chance. Well, guys, here's here's my point, Rex. If that ball bounces one foot differently, Pittsburgh recovers it, recovers it. The Cowboys are two and three, and we're sitting here going, oh my gosh, you were terrible on offense. Three, they four turnovers, right? three of them down in the red zone. Mm-hmm. So, yes, I, I understand that the win is a Says a the guy who win ran out of the back the of the end zone. They this have, football team is is not an above average. Football. They're, but they're they flawed. Have. They're flawed, just like a lot of teams. A lot of teams right now. The, the Philadelphia Eagles are flawed. You know what I mean? Like there's so the, the, the 49ers are flawed. There are so many flawed teams right now, in the, in across the National Football League. Again, if I'm the Dallas Cowboys, I take the win, but I know I got a lot of corrections. I, I got to tell you, like I, I was more impressed with their offense. All right, number one, you get 446 yards against the Pittsburgh Steelers. In Pittsburgh, yep. nobody does that, all right? So that's impressive. They had a protection plan for Dak Prescott, all right? And I know J.J. Watt still damn near ruined the game. T.J. Yeah. Uh, T.J. Watt, excuse me. Sack, yep. All right? But they had a protection plan, all right? They also showed me that they're com- they need to be more balanced on offense, and they knew it. They ran the football, and that's how you beat good teams coming up. That's how you, you're going to compete with Detroit. That's how you're going to compete with uh, – the Niners, stuff like that. So to me, yo, know, I was super encouraged by this. I think the coaching, they looked at themselves and said, hey, we're going to have to be more physical. We're going to have to be committed to running the football more than we have. You and think? they were. And their protection plan, I love their protection plan. Because every time you went, T.J. Uh, Watts get chipped, all that, even on the touchdown, it starts with protection first. Sure. And that's how, going, Aiden Hutchinson, like, come on. Like, yeah. you're, you're, you know you're going to get chipped and things like that. Yeah. They had more receivers. You mentioned Ferguson. I said that Sunday he yep. was going to be the guy. All right, now you find Tolbert. If you can get those guys consistently to be part of this offense, mm-hmm. man, I'm just telling CD you. Line. There we go. Hey, Payton, let me start. We were just talking. There we go. So we can end it right there. It's nice to actually hear somebody say something good about the Cowboys. But, you know, it, it's funny because Cowboy fans, you know, winning isn't enough. Winning isn't enough against a great defense on the road, in prime time, battered and bruised and injured. This is a good win for us. No if, ands, or buts about it. You found out Rico is a decent running back. And they found a running game for the first time this season, going over 100 yards. You found out Jalen Tolbert can be your number two guy, given the opportunity now, who, when CeeDee Lamb is being double covered or not having a good game, that he's somebody you can rely on. You found out Jake Ferguson is becoming the security blanket. All these things will bode well. As much as they're sitting there saying, well, you're not going to beat the Lions, you're not going to beat the 49ers, that this is a flawed team. Um, I believe, didn't San Francisco lose yesterday to the Cardinals? Didn't they lose to the Cardinals? I'm just asking for a friend. So this is a week-to-week league. For the Cowboys to get this win, hopefully a couple of weeks from now, we end up getting back D-Law, we end up getting Deron Bland back. We end up getting Carson back. We've got some reinforcements that are going to come back and help this team be even better. If you find a way to win where you should have had a blowout when you have so many things going against you, that is a momentum builder. And with that being said, i got a roof to start getting done. Disrespected yet? Does this defense have any heart? That's no. Cool. They suck. Versus- I've been telling you all season, Philly. Shit on you. They've shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, <laughs> Jayla Carter? It's like, they shit on you. They've shit on you. <laughs> they have shit on you. Don't don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, <laughs> Jayla Carter? It's like, they shit on you. Kill them. <laughs>